Hi, it's time for another math easy solution uh, term discuss further into polar coordinates and now look at example seven which looks at uh, sketching a cardioid uh, shape or just a heart a heart shaped uh, curve and that's this example here example seven is, is states sketch the curve r equals to one plus sine theta and again this is in polar coordinates yeah, so let's look at the solution here and uh, recall in example six that I just plotted a bunch of points and uh, and s uh, graphed it that way. So instead of plotting points as an example six, we can first sketch the graph of r equals one plus sine theta in Cartesian coordinates. Yeah, so Cartesian coordinates, that's just the regular x, y coordinates. So if we were to do that, if we let, let's say r, let's say this is going to be theta, this is r and here I'll just move that graph over here so when we have this r equals one plus sine theta that's just basically a uh, sine theta but you just move it up by one so when when we have sine uh, when you put theta zero sine zero is just zero so you just have a one so that means we have a one here and that's at uh, theta equals to zero and all we have after this increase is just a uh, sine curve. So it's going to look something like this and then starts repeating. Oh, this one just goes up, touches this and then goes back, etc. And then just goes on and on. And then at this point here, uh, at this point across here, this is basically a uh, sine curve. So we get a sine goes up, down, all the way to, to this point where then it starts repeating itself and that's at 2 pi. And then at this point here, this is just pi over 2. And it increases by 1 because, this, remember, this is a trigonomic sine function. So this is at 2. And then at the bottom here, this is at 0. It goes to 0. And then it goes back up and just keeps repeating. And, and likewise, for the reverse side, would be something like that. And it just keeps going on and on. And at uh, this point here, this is just at pi. And then at this point, this is going to be pi plus pi over 2. That's just going to be, well, 3 pi over 2. That's a third like that. And uh, now this basically enables us to read at a glance the values of r that correspond to basically increasing values of theta. So from this, we could uh, translate how this would look like in polar coordinates. For instance, uh, we see that as uh, theta increases from 0 to pi over 2, so from here to this point across there, uh, the distance from yeah, from from O, I'll, I'll write this as a big big O or zero for the origin. So the R, which is going to be the distance from this in polar coordinates, increases from one to two. In other words, this is, goes from here one all the way to two like that. So as you increase this uh, theta, you have the distance increasing from uh, this. So the theta goes from zero to pi over two, and then the distance R goes from one to two. So we sketch the corresponding part of the polar co curve in the figure below. And what we'll have is if we have just a figure like this. So initially here, when theta is equal to 0, we have a distance of 1 here. So in polar coordinates, all it is is this r is just a distance from the origin. So we have 1 across here like that. And this is at, uh, this point is at uh, pi I, I mean, not pi, this is at theta is equal to zero. So that's at this point like that. And then when we rotate this by pi over two, that's 90 degrees. So we get pi over two equals to theta. Let's write this down, theta equals to pi over two. And the distance increases. And then we get to, uh, instead of one, we get to all the way to two like that. So this is one distance, this is two. So what we end up having is a curve like this because this is increasing until we finally go up to here which is the farthest distance so the distance r is increasing and you could see that by here so the distance r is increasing and uh, that's by this curve and that's why we have to curve back down here because it becomes flat yeah, it becomes flat across there like that and now the next uh, part of the curve we can sketch as well as theta increases from pi over 2 to pi and uh, you could see that from here so from pi over 2 to pi here so as you increase from there what ends up happening is the distance r uh, drops from 2 all the way to 1 here at this point 
So what we end up having is, well, yeah, R decreases from 2 to 1. So we sketch the next part of the curve as in the figure below. So now we have, so from here is pi over 2. That's distance pi over 2. And that's the distance of 2. So we have 1, 2, and then it goes all the way to cross here. This is distance uh, or the angle of pi, and it goes back to 1. This is 1, this is 1, 2. And then basically it uh, we have a curve like that because now the distance is decreasing. Uh, you see off the curve like that and go back down to here because it's not a linear uh, decrease as you can see here. It's gradually lowering the distance like that. And now likewise you can go to the next step which is as fate increases from pi to 3 pi over 2 or decreases from 1 to 0 and you could see that here. So from pi all the way to 3 pi over 2 we go from uh, distance is 1 yeah, distance is 1 here and then goes all the way down to 0. So now this r is 0 at this 3 pi over 2. So we could sketch that part like this and again this is going to be pi and then this full angle across there that's just going to be 3 pi over 2 or I believe that's 270 degrees so we have it goes from 1 and then goes all the way to 0 so but it, it's, it decreases so when we have a curve like that in fact because now the r is at 1 starting then we have to go to 0 and again it's not a direct uh, a decrease it's a gradual one like that. So we'll just draw a curve. And now the next one is finally going from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. So from here to here we go from 0, r is 0, all the way to r is 1. And basically, uh, yeah, when we do that, I'll just jump over here. Finally, as fate increases from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, r increases from 0 to 1. We could draw that. And again, from here to here, that is our 3 pi over 2 and just draw a big curve so we can draw this inside all the way to yeah to 2 pi like that and then basically you go from distance 0 we have to go to the distance let's say 1 is over here like that and then this is going to curve like that yeah so now that we have this curve and we have this one here those are just the exact mirror images and we have this one and now we have this across so we have four of those and then we can yeah, put them all together, but now if we let theta increase beyond 2 pi or decrease beyond 0, we would simply retrace our path because of the periodic nature of the trigonomic sine function. You could even uh, see that in this curve. So as you go across, let's say you go beyond 2 pi somewhere here, that's identical to somewhere here. So you're just going to retrace your path. Likewise, if you go left of the 0, uh, you get, let's say, a point here that is identical to over here. So all you're doing is retracing that path. So now what we could do is put them all together. So putting together all the parts from above, we get the following shapes. So remember, there's four of these parts of the curve. So let's put these together. We have a shape that looks like this. So it goes from one here, like that, all the way to two. And uh, let's draw this a bit better. So it goes from like that goes to 2 and likewise is the mirror image across this side that's a 1 so this is 1 this is a 2 this is a 1 across this is a 1 draw this across looks something like this yeah just fix that up so something like that and then over here we get a curve like this and let's draw this again like that so yeah it looks something like that it looks like a upside down heart and yeah, it looks like upside down heart. And this shape is in fact called a cardioid, which I believe is Greek for heart. So I think that's a Greek word for heart, like that. And again, it's called cardioid because it's shaped like a heart. So that's one type. You just flip it around, uh, you'll get the uh, yeah, just the right side up heart. Anyways, that is all for today. Hopefully, you learned from this. Uh, just a quick example on uh, graphing with polar coordinates and especially this circular shape and uh, just solving it by first graphing in Cartesian and then plotting it onto polar coordinates. Anyways, that is all for today. If you learn, like always, you can download these notes in the exact, yeah, these exact notes in the link below. And uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.